the first impact for companies in Taiwan is it likely increases the number of depositions for non-U.S. witnesses. Uh, because things have become administratively less expensive, parties are more likely to take their full slate of 10 fact depositions, which are, they're permitted to under the rules in the United States. Uh, Pre-pandemic, pre-remote depositions, it was very typical to reduce the number of depositions in Taiwan, for example, to two to four uh, designated corporate witnesses who would testify on behalf of the company. Now you're likely to have maybe six more witnesses than you would before remote depositions occurred. And so while each individual depot might be less expensive, the overall deposition cost for companies in Taiwan may be higher because the number of depositions was significantly greater. The second point that comes up from remote depositions is that virtually all the depositions are video recorded. Today's presentation to you is being recorded because the WebEx or Zoom platforms, whatever the popular platform is, allows for automatic recording. And it also allows for automatic transcription. Uh, Pre-pandemic, it was very typical not to take video depositions of non-strategic witnesses because parties focused on minimizing costs. Now, because all the depositions will be videotaped and it's very easy to get written transcripts of the depositions and to edit those transcripts and depositions, all deposition testimony must be viewed as live trial testimony. And the third one, and this is extremely important for companies, is the availability of the remote depositions creates a lot of concerns about protecting sensitive information. There are significantly more fights about protective orders. How do you handle source code, uh, GDS files, manufacturing recipes and plans? Uh, each of those may be used at the deposition. Where will they be stored? Where will they be shown? Um, who will get access and how do you make sure that someone who's not supposed to see something doesn't see it? And remote depositions and remote technology have greatly increased the concerns about confidential information. Uh, the next slide, Albert. Oh, Remote 而法官是怎么解决的？嗯，像第一个这个case，我讲啊，叫做 YM YM versus Beaumont Unified，我就叫它 Beaumont 这个case。那这个case蛮有意思的，这个是因为在 Defense Counsel 在被告这个地方，他呃不愿意说让这个 Plaintiffs Counsel 能够跟这个 Deponent 就是被询证的这个证人在同一个房间里面在。Remote deposition 的时候，因为为什么呢？因为怕说这个这个 plaintiff counsel 跟这个证人呢，他们可以私底下交换呃小纸条，或者是他可以在镜头看不到的地方，然后去告诉这些证人要怎么样作证。他这个他英文上面讲，他说manipulate他的deposition，就是去有可能去作假。那法官最后认为说这个论点在现在这个疫情下面是不成立的因为首先是因为这个疫情的关系第二个这个他说法官是说其实在被告的律师他本身也常常做这种remote deposition 那既然现在是这么一个common的事情的话那他所谓这个担心的这个点虽然有可能发生但是不够足语拒绝这个 deposition 的构成的理由 um, 
呃，这个 case 的话是比较呃，就是更描述更基本的一个问题，就是说现在在这个疫情底下，是不是可以去 force 去逼人家去做在呃面对面的询证？那这次呢？在在这个 case 里面呢，这个 defense c o u n c i l 他就说，嗯，我们我应该可以在，我应该可以在这个情况下面面对面的询问，为什么？因为我们大家可以做一些呃保护好的一些措施，比如说我们可以大家戴口罩啊，然后大家可以说做一些这个这个呃新冠病毒的测试啊，然后嘞，所以说。我们这样子的话，我们大家还是可以一起在呃面对面的去询证。那因为这是我的我的我有这样子的权利。那这个呃 plaintiff 呢，他就说 no 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 不行，我我我们不能去呃 take 这个 risk。所以说他 moves for protective order。protective order 意思就是说保护令，他可以保护他的证人呃拒绝这个被询证。那法官听了双方的这些意见以后，就认为说嗯。这个在现在这个疫情的情况下面，就算你做了这些新冠病毒的这些保护措施，也并不能去确定说这个是不是大家是真的是会安全的。而且这个所有的这些，除了这些律师以外、证人以外，其他还有这个摄影师，还有这个 court reporter， 就是法庭书记。那他们去还要去做这个测试，然后呢，他们这个戴口罩可是在狭小的空间里面这么长时间，最少七八个小时，实在是太危险了。所以说，这个法官他也说，哎，不行，这个，嗯，我们要让这个 deposition 可以在 remote 的方法来进行，而所以他去，呃、嗯，所以他不让他去这个这个，他不让这个 defense 去做这个面对面的询证。呃、uh, ，Go ahead, Jim。Yep. And so,、uh, why don't we go to the next slide, Albert? Yeah. So, so one of the things about the technology that has really changed that since、uh, the pandemic hit the United States、um, since March first of two thousand twenty, there have been over six thousand two hundred federal district court hearings that were conducted remotely. The vast majority of these were done using the Zoom platform. In the 19 years prior to the pandemic, only 10,800 remote hearings occurred, and those were mostly by telephone. And I believe that this technology does have a major benefit for companies in Taiwan, in particular. And the it's the impact number one:、uh, in-house counsel can attend the hearing themselves and evaluate the conduct of the court. The conduct of their counsel and the conduct of the opposing counsel, and in-house counsel will have the ability, oftentimes, to remotely communicate with their counsel during the hearing.、Uh, Pre-pandemic, in a live courtroom, most companies did not want to spend the time or the money to have a valuable employee fly to the United States for a short hearing. Here,、uh, if the hearing is remote,、um, you'll be able to attend. You'll be able to listen in, and whether it's a claim construction hearing, a summary judgment hearing, a discovery motion, because the hearing will be going on, you will have the ability to email or text your counsel during the hearing, so that you both get to witness it yourself, evaluate the conduct of everyone involved, and have more real-time input into what happens. I think that's a major positive,、um, better sense of control, a better opportunity. For you to to feel that your interests are being protected,、um, the second impact, though, is you have to recognize that the methods of appearing and presenting in person, and the methods of appearing and presenting via the Zoom platform, in particular, that's the popular one in the United States. There are some differences, and it's really important that you practice the presentation and the technology prior to the hearing. And that you have a backup plan、um, in case the the camera doesn't work, the graphics don't work,、um, because the hearing is going to go on anyways. And so I think the the manner of presentation, your level of a backup plan, is also very important. Albert, the next slide. Now. 
there have been in the United States a very small number of trials, and this is still experimental, where the trial itself has been conducted remotely. And the reason for everyone here is that in the United States, in civil cases, for the most part, there is a constitutional right to a jury trial. And so, unlike Europe, for example, or Taiwan or Japan, for example, uh, if there's a patent trial in the United States, it's mostly done in front of a jury. Uh, patent plaintiffs believe that juries uh, favor the patent holder and insist on uh, their constitutional rights. Um, so there are numerous risks when you do a trial remotely because a jury that could be eight or 12 people are all located in different spots than the court and the parties and the witnesses. And it's still a work in progress. I don't, well, I believe that depositions, a very high percentage of depositions post pandemic will still be done remotely. And I believe a significant portion of hearings post pandemic will be done remotely. It's not at all clear to me that the judges will want the trials to be remote. So trials are likely to still be in person affairs because first of all, the courts cannot control the conduct of the jurors. There's numerous distractions in the trial that I'm discussing here. In, in Texas, jurors left in the middle of testimony for phone calls. They were walking about. Some jurors were playing video games. So I think that um, while bench trials, this is important for people who do Hatch-Waxman, pharmaceutical cases, um, ITC cases, cases without a jury, I do believe a significant number of them will be done remotely. I think some of the judges have in fact liked the remote trials, but jury trials in the US will be in person. Uh, next slide. And the next slide, Albert. So um, this, at some level, this point, looking at this slide shouldn't be new. In litigation, whether I'm sure in Taiwan, uh, I'm sure that Roger or someone will comment to that, or in the United States, being prepared is always a good idea. But when you have a remote deposition, it's extremely important. You do need to work out, if you wanna be effective, all the logistics ahead of time. How you, what's the protective order? How are you going to handle exhibits? Where is the interpreter? What are you going to do about a check interpreter? The court reporter. Um, this is my personal opinion, and I think it works well. But, you know, people do disagree with this, so I want to be open. I have always found it better when both sides agree on the court reporter and both sides agree on the interpreter because then there's a higher comfort level and it allows things to go more smoothly. To the extent that the parties fight about the interpreter and they battle, it compounds the challenges of a remote depot. Second, if you're going to do a remote deposition, you really do need to take the time differences into account and you have to decide whether or not um, it's a good idea. Um, there's a 12 to 16 hour time difference. The first remote deposition Mr. Xi and I did was on behalf of a Taiwan company. The taking attorney was in Chicago. Uh, I was defending actually at the Grand Hyatt in Taipei. That's where I was located. So I was with the witness. And the taking attorney literally fell asleep midway through a question. We thought the screen had frozen and we thought it was a technical difficulty and then the interpreter said, uh, Mr. Yoon, the attorney's asleep. So just remember that you do have to take into account the time difference. And also you have to take into account the time difference for the witness. Um, you know, I've seen it where they said, well, we want the US attorney to be awake. Do you really want your main witness to wake up at four in the morning or appear late at night? Um, just take that into account. Um, it can all be accommodated if you give people a notice ahead of time, but oftentimes people don't think of that. And then the other one is know who's going to be in the room. As you saw with Mr. Xi when he was discussing some of the fights, 
in a remote deposition, people tend to want to know who is in the room. And some lawyers in the United States insist that anyone in the room be on camera. And so you need to work that out um, as to one, uh, to make sure you know who's going to be in the room, and two, whether you want to be on camera yourself during the deposition. Those are all things that you should just decide ahead of time and you have to plan. Next slide. As an attorney, when I take depositions and defend depositions, taking depositions remotely uh, is more difficult. You have to have everything planned out. You have to have your exhibits done. When I take a deposition remotely, I usually work with a tech company ahead of time. I pre-highlight the documents. I go over the documents with my technician and have the relevant portions already blown up so they're ready to go on the screen. Uh, otherwise, it's, you lose control of the witness. The witness has difficulties following. Um, and when you're defending a witness, you should try to insist, if at all possible, on the gallery view so the witness will always see you on the screen and that you make sure that the witness pauses so that you can make objections or instruct. Um, it's very much like a dance um, and you have to basically be coordinated or you will step on your partner's feet and no one wants that. Um, Mr. Shi, you can do the next two. Uh 因为证人是这个循证的主角 你的背景，如果你不用virtual background的话，virtual background就像建模跟Matt这背后有一个我们的事务所的这个logo 我会建议我的证人make sure，因为有的时候在Zoom里面它有两种mode，一个叫gallery mode，一个叫做呃，I think 然后由于这个远程作证的话，呃，对方看不到你在做什么，所以我会建议我的证人，如果你需要去看这些文件，平常你在询证的时候，你拿起文件看，可能对方律师说，哎，哎，我不要你看，我就是你能不能够直接回答
在去年很有名的一个 video， 这是一个律师两双方律师出席一个远程的 hearing， 然后所发生的事情。I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. You might want to. Uh, oh, it's on. Can you hear me, Jeff? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the, it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not. I'm not a cat. 所以在这个 hearing 里面，就是他刚好在 Zoom 上面，他有一个 filter， 他把他的脸变成了一只猫，但是他的不太，他们事先没有去做这个测试，所以也不确定怎么把这个 filter 给拿下来，所以造成了一个呃很有意思的一段小小的 clipping。So with that, um, thank you so much for your attention, and that's our uh presentation on remote depositions uh hearings under the uh, COVID-19 pandemic.